In one of my last videos, we milled up a big sugar pine log. In the comments of that video, it was overwhelming that you guys want to see some sugar pine trees. Sugar pine is probably unique to most people because they only grow in a relatively small part of the world. They're in parts of Oregon, parts of California, a little bit into Mexico, and just a little bit in Nevada. Not Nevada, but Nevada. They also happen to be the world's largest pine. Some people think it's ponderosa, but it's actually the sugar pine. And they have the longest cones, up to 24 inches. Although 14 to 18 is more common. Although I don't have any gigantic ones on this property, I do have some good sized ones. We'll go on a little sugar pine tour. If you look back over here, there's a sugar pine here. There's one over here. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. Nah, I'm just kidding with you. We'll go look at some closer ones. Before we do that, I want to show you one more over here at a distance. This tallest one here is one that I called Krusty the Clown. Because a few years ago, the top of it looked like Krusty the Clown from The Simpsons. It doesn't anymore because it grew out of it. Which makes it a little bit pointless to show it to you now, but I always found it amusing. You guys can sit back and relax while I do all the walking. We'll take a little sugar pine tour and see if there's anything else interesting along the way. Look what I just found. Gyromitra esculenta. These are poisonous if not prepared right. I don't eat them, but do you know what this means? When these pop out, that means morel mushrooms are next. Onward. Here's the stump from that big sugar pine we milled up. Some of the first videos I did was cutting this tree down. Oh, hello. We have some audience. Anyway, my first few videos were of cutting this tree down and wrestling it out with the tractor. I cut it down because it was killed by bark beetles, so I put it on the mill and put it to good use. Let's go find a live one. Here's a good sized sugar pine. It's not huge, but it's a little bigger than the one we milled up. There's another one up the hill. Another one over here. Most of the really big sugar pines were logged off decades ago, but I think if we go up over the hill, there's a bigger one. Here's another one. If you look at the tip of the branches, you might be able to see the young cones starting to form. That's a good sized stick. As they start to get mature, they get this flaky bark similar to a ponderosa. The idea is during a wildfire, when these start to burn, they pop off and the fire falls off the tree with them. There's a little bit of char on here. Most of these big old trees have survived a fire in the past. You should be able to tell the difference between the sugar pine on the right and the ponderosa on the left. The sugar pine has the short needles, the ponderosa has the long needles. Guess what I just found? That is the first morel mushroom I've found this year. Sometimes if you look around, you find more. I don't see any. Maybe we'll find more somewhere else. I didn't expect to find any this early, but actually it's not early. Everything's been late this year, so even when things are a little bit late, they seem early. Did that make any sense? Sounds like something Yogi Berra would say. I think there's a bigger sugar pine over here. 
or maybe it's about the same size. Again, here's the difference between the sugar pine in the middle and these ponderosas over here with the long needles. Here's a young ponderosa. It's a three needle pine. In each bundle, you have three needles. If we go over here to one of these young sugar pines, these are five needles per bundle. You can compare that to the three needle ponderosa. Now imagine one two or three times the diameter of this one. That's how big they can get. I looked up some of the stats for some of the largest sugar pine trees in the world, but I got some conflicting data. The largest diameter is somewhere between 10 and a half and an 11 and a half feet in diameter. It was believed that the tallest one is just in the next county over at 255 feet, but it looks like they've found some specimens in the Sierra that are more like 270 feet. I don't have any that big, but I think I have one bigger than this over here. Also a place where I found some morels one year. As is common, they tower above everything else. There's one of the ginormous cones that didn't fall off. This one's had a little drama in the past. Probably a fire scar. Possibly in the last fire there was a log or something that rolled up against it and it burned hot enough to scar it. I've been looking for some big cones, but I'm not finding anything really big. We've had a couple really hot dry years. I'm wondering if that has slowed the growth. They're big, but they're not as big as they could be. We'll keep looking, maybe we can find some more. This little bit younger, smaller tree makes a little bit bigger cones. More of that flaky bark. I'll show you some ponderosa bark. But before I get to that, I found something that some people might find gross, some people might find interesting. Sometimes you need to poke things with a stick. I believe this is cougar scat. It has all the hair in it and the bone fragments. Piece of bone right there. There's also manzanita berries in this. This was probably a fox and then a cougar, either the cougar did its business on the fox's business, or the fox did its business on the cougar's business. Some people think cougar bury it like a house cat, but I've heard it said they don't. Not 100% sure, but that's probably what that is. Here's a ponderosa. It's even more flaky than the sugar pine. As a kid, I called it puzzle bark because it has all these jigsaw puzzle shapes. Let's go see if we can find anything good over here. This one's a dug fir. It has the deeply furrowed bark, not flaky at all. When they get big like this, they have thick bark, which makes them fire resistant. Another Douglas fir. Dug fir can actually get bigger than sugar pine or any of the pines, but not likely here because they like a cooler, wetter climate. It's believed that the tallest tree in the world is a coast redwood. But it's also believed the tallest tree probably was a dug fir up in British Columbia, where they had some massive trees there, but they were logged decades ago. But these things can get massive, but they're not actually a true fir. Dug fir is in a genus of its own. They get the name fir, I think, because their needles look a lot like true fir needles. 
here are some dug fir needles. Instead of being in a bundle like pines, they have individual needles coming off the stem and the needles are pointing in all directions around the stem. On true firs, depending on the species, the needles will be either flat pointing horizontally or a combination of horizontal and up. They usually don't have needles pointing down. There are also a lot of other differences we could get into if we were to do a video about firs. Incense cedar don't have needles. Instead, they have what are called scales, these segmented leaves. Here's a sugar pine that ran into some difficulties. You can see where the woodpeckers have flaked the outer bark off, digging for the bugs that killed it, all the flaked bark on the ground. One of their biggest enemies is bark beetles, especially during drought years. Also blister rust is a problem, a fungus that gets them. They can also be vulnerable to lightning. A lot of times they're just the biggest tree around, so they're the ones that get hit. This big dug fir had a similar fate. It survived hundreds of years and probably many wildfires. And two or three years ago, it gave up. It might be that it didn't survive the little bugs. You can see the char from wildfire that happened long, long ago. The thick bark protects them from wildfire as long as the fire isn't too intense. A couple sugar pines in between these two incense cedars. Here's a good sized incense cedar. We've seen a lot of that on the mill lately. Incense cedar is not a true cedar. None of the North American trees we call cedar are actually cedar. But that's another story. I don't know if people find that interesting or not. If it is, we can go into that in another video. Got a nice patch of sugar pine right here. have all these cones all over the ground. Here's the difference between a ponderosa on the left and a sugar pine on the right. And that's not even a very big sugar pine cone. In the late summer, the pine cones mature. In between each of these scales, you'll find two seeds about a half inch long. They have a hard, thin shell. You can crack them open like a sunflower seed. Inside is a whitish seed that's a lot like a pinion pine nut. I think they taste similar. When the scales open up, the seeds drop out. Sometimes you can find them on the ground, but you have to fight the squirrels and the birds for them. Usually they pick up most of them, so they're hard to find. Sometimes you'll find a squirrel in the top of a tree knocking them down, so they can go down later and pull them apart and get the seeds out. And the way you'll know it, every once in a while you'll hear thud, thud thud tumbling out of the tree and then a big thud when they hit the ground. In that case, you could go down there and steal one of them. The squirrel's not going to know the difference, but if you do, watch your head. Death by pine cone does not sound very impressive. It's not something you want on your epitaph. But once you get one, if the scales aren't open yet, you want to wear gloves because they got pitch all over them. Just open up the scales and you can find the seeds inside. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of a sugar pine on the right ponderosa on the left. The sugar pine has the narrower furrows and smaller flakes. The ponderosa, a little different color, wider furrows, bigger flakes. Dug fur over here, not there, that's madrone. But over here, its bark is very rough, deeply furrowed, and it has no flakes. Another side-by-side -side example. Sugar pine on the right, ponderosa on the left. Narrower, smaller furrows on the sugar pine, smaller flakes. Ponderosa, a little different color, deeper furrows, bigger flakes. Sugar pine with dug fur in the background. Really nice specimen, tall, straight. Another tall, straight one. A 
Someone made a suggestion in the comments that on this video, I talk about the differences between firs, pines, cedars, hemlock, spruce, all the conifers. But the four we covered are the only ones that grow here. There are some white fir, which is a true fir, down along the creek, but that's way over there. To cover the spruce, the hemlock, and the true firs, and others, we would have to go somewhere else. If we went up in the high Cascades near Crater Lake, we could find a lot of those or over on the coast which maybe we'll do sometime. Also up toward Crater Lake, I know where there are some bigger sugar pine. If there's anything else you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. But for now, I'm going to call this video a video. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.